amen, beyond singing and preaching, my favorite part is just to focus and get your mind directed on God. And um, now I'm fixing to hear my second favorite part is uh, teaching. A lot of folks don't like to come to Sunday school. They use the part of, uh, well, I've heard that before, but I, I really believe it's because they don't want to get up out of bed that early. Praise the Lord. Amen, which I don't think 10, I think 10 o'clock is the middle of the day. Can I hear amen? Well, not much, huh? <laughs> amen. To me, when the sun pops up, my eyes just do that number for some reason. But how I many is glad that you're able to make it into Sunday school today? Amen. Looking for a good time today. We're in Proverbs chapter 8. If you want to flip your Bibles there, Brother Brad Blanton is going to be teaching there today. And I'm enjoying these Proverbs, and we have heard a lot about wisdom and probably hear more about wisdom today. Amen. That lets us know one thing. We don't have enough yet. We don't have enough yet. We need to learn, learn, learn. Every chapter in Proverbs speaks to you if you let it. Amen. We're going to take up our uh, Sunday school offering. If the ushers will come, give you a chance to give. Thank you guys for coming as close as you can here for the speaker. That means a lot to them and uh, can more. But again, if you ever have a question about teaching, just raise your hand. We'll try to get to you. But Brother Brad's just like me. You have to make sure we see your hand because we get to teaching and we don't um, see hands sometimes. But let's ask Brother Terry to bless this offering. Lord, we just thank you for bringing us here today, Lord Jesus. Lord, bringing us here safely, Lord Jesus. Lord, let the rain uh, let up so we can get into a building, Lord, without getting wet, Lord Jesus. Lord, we just fear, Lord. Lord, that we're going to put our focus up on you today, Lord Jesus. Lord, raise our hands, our eyes to the hills where our help comes, Lord Jesus. Lord, we pray you bless this offering, this service, Lord, each minister here today, Lord, each classroom, Lord. Lord, it's your teaching. Lord, you minister to us, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. Receive the offering. Brother Brad, come on. Let's obey the Holy Ghost today. And if you are an usher or uh, like to be an usher, please meet me in my office here in just a few minutes. God bless. Well, praise the Lord, everyone, this morning. I'm already feeling the anointing of the Holy Ghost. Would you lift up your hands and give God praise, give him some honor, give him some glory this morning. Father, we love you, Lord God, this morning, O oh Lord. God, with all of our hearts, O oh Lord. God, with all of our souls, Lord, with all of our minds. Father, with all our strength, O oh God. Lord, we love you. We acknowledge you are the one true God, you are the eternal one, and Father, there's none like unto you, Lord God, in the heavens above, the earth beneath, nor under the earth. The Bible says you're a just God, and you're a Savior, and Lord God, you're slow to anger and slow to wrath, and for that, God, we're so thankful today. Father, we thank you for the unction, for the anointing, for your presence, God, that we feel, and we pray, God, you'll bless every teacher, you will anoint every speaker, you'll bless every student of the Word of God, and we'll ask it with thanksgiving in Jesus' name, and everyone say praise the Lord. Go ahead and clap your hands unto the Lord. I'm going to let the Holy Ghost have his way this morning, Brother Harold. I'm under the unction of the Holy Ghost right now. Do you love the presence of God? Do you love his word today? Are you thankful for the cross? You know, Brother Turner, I was thinking the Bible says the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness. But unto us which are saved, it is the power of God. Aren't you thankful for the cross? Aren't you thankful for Calvary today, for the power of God that saved a wretch like you and me? You know, I was also reading how the Bible says that Jesus is the power of God, Sister Turner, and the wisdom of God. Years ago, the Lord showed me the meaning. God looked down from heaven upon lost humanity, so to speak, and he looked down and he saw the plight of humanity. Of course, he knew this before the foundation of the world. But in his wisdom, he had a master plan how to save all humanity. And he had the power to do that. And so when God manifest himself in flesh, in Christ, Jesus became the wisdom of God and the power of God manifested to save lost humanity. Brother Reynolds, in a little book that I wrote years ago, I, I said this. An example would be a man falls overboard from his ship. He's in the raging sea. He's drowning. He has no strength. He has no ability to save himself. But Brother Ash, the captain of the ship, 
He sees the plight of this man that's lost, that's drowning without hope. And so he grabs a life ring with a rope. He throws it to the perishing man. And in effect, that life ring becomes the wisdom and the power of the captain to save that lost, perishing man. And so again, on the cross, when Jesus died for your sins and for my sins, we see the power of God and the wisdom of God displayed in our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Aren't you thankful for that today? Sister Turner, the Bible says that in Christ are hid all of the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. Aren't you thankful for that? I believe the more, Brother Dale, we get into the Word of God, into the Spirit of God, and the more we ask God for knowledge and wisdom and understanding, I've got to believe that He will grant that to you and I. Can you say amen? Got a lot of notes here. We're in Proverbs chapter 8, as our good pastor just mentioned. And, of course, there's 31 chapters in this great book. And we're just taking maybe one verse or two verses from each chapter and kind of elaborating or expounding on the one or two verses instead of all, well, in this case, what is it, 36 verses. We'll just kind of, you know, generalize on a lot of it. You heard Brother Edwards last Sunday. Did you enjoy his, his sermon? I was thinking, Sister Nance, there's a little, little bit of humor in it, how he was preaching about the man that was devil-possessed. People call him the demoniac of the Gadarenes. He dwelled in, you know, the land where the tribe of Gad settled. And, of course, demon is not a King James Version word. But nevertheless, he had many devils in him. And when Jesus asked, the, the Spirit spoke through the man and said, We are legion, or that's our name, or my name, for we are many. Isn't it amazing how that hundreds, even perhaps thousands of spirits could be inside of one man? They besought the Lord not to, you know, really torment them, and they asked the Lord's permission to go into a herd of swine. They entered into 2,000 swine. I don't know if it was one evil spirit in each, each one or two or three in some, or most of them were devil-possessed and the other were just carried away when they began to violently run down a steep place into a lake and were choked or were drowned. And I'd made a little joke to Brother Pat, and I'd heard years ago how the Lord made deviled ham out of the swine. But Brother Patton came back with a little humor, and he said, well, really, they wanted the devils to be cast into their chickens so they could have some deviled eggs. But, you know, God's able to make deviled eggs and deviled ham, so to speak, out of your problem. The devil's troubling you, the Lord Jesus. Well, he's no match for Jesus Christ. Can you say amen? Thank God Jesus said, if I, with the finger of God, Holy Ghost just gave me that. If Jesus can take but the finger of God, figuratively speaking, and cast out devils, how much more if he took the whole hand and the whole arm of God could he have done? Thank God the devil is no match for Jesus, and if you're filled with the Holy Ghost, he's no match for you or I. If you're a man of God or a woman of God that prays, that gets into the Word of God, that walks with him, friend, he's no match for you. There was one, I'm just going to go how the Holy Ghost leads. There was one, one man had some devils in him, and there were seven sons of a Jewish priest. His name was Sceva. They'd seen or heard evidently of Paul casting out devils, so they're going to play around with the power of God in the name of Jesus. He said, we adjure you by Jesus whom Paul preaches. And you know the story. The devil speaking through the man's voice said, well, we know Jesus, and Paul we know, but who are you? And he leaped on seven men, tore their clothes off, and all we said made streakers out of them. Because they, they fled naked and wounded. Well, not completely nude, but he tore some of their clothes off. And the, but the devil knows who Jesus is. How about you? Do you know who he is? The devils believe there's one God, and the Bible says they tremble. Oh, hundreds of millions of devils tremble. But thank God you and I this morning, we rejoice in the knowledge of God, in the wisdom of God, in the power of God. And I feel him all through me right now. Brother Daniel's going to be hard to slow it down. Like Brother Hunt was talking about, you raise your hand, I'll try to get to you here. <laughs> But praise the Lord. But he made, I said, devil ham. But again, Satan is no match 
for the Lord Jesus Christ. The Bible said he's the head of all principality and power. And in Luke 10, he called 70 men to him, and he gave them power to cast out devils, and he sent them out by twos, 35 couples. And when you're in a deliverance ministry, Brother Turner, when you're used to cast devils out of people, and you're used in the demonstration and power of the Holy Ghost, there's times you may need an assistant with you. He sent them out by twos, 35 twos, Luke 10, they went out. And they came back to the Lord rejoicing, saying, Lord, even the devils are subject unto us through thy name. Thank God there's power in the name of Jesus, Brother Webb. The Bible said, in my name shall they, what, cast out devils. We're serving, well, a wise God and a powerful God. Matter of fact, he is the only wise God and our Savior. If you would turn to Proverbs chapter 8. We're getting cranked up. It's warming up a little bit. Verses 4 and 5 are our, uh, I'll say, focus verses. Proverbs 8, verse 4. Here's the wisdom of God speaking. And as Sister Hunt said not long ago, here we see wisdom is personified. It's really an attribute of Almighty God, but here it's going to be personified. Some people say luck. They personify luck, which I don't think there's anything as luck, but they call her Lady Luck. They go to the casino hoping Lady Luck will be there, and you'll see them walking back home. They've lost their car and probably almost everything. The Lady Luck wasn't there that day. And we even say of hurricanes, we call them women, Katrina and Camille. I think now some of the women got upset, so now they're adding some men's names but they are personified. That's when you take a thing or an object or something that's not a person and you speak as if it is a person. So here wisdom, the wisdom of God is personified. And here's what the wisdom of God says in verse 4 of Proverbs 8. Unto you, O men, I call, and my voice is to the sons of man. O ye simple, God's wisdom is called into men that are simple, saying to them, understand wisdom, and the wisdom of God is called into fools. Hmm. And ye fools, be ye of an understanding heart. So again, the, the theme throughout the book of Proverbs is wisdom. And it, as well, as well as knowledge and understanding, these are key words that are found throughout this 31-chapter book. I'm going to be a little redundant and say a few things I've said in the past. We know that Solomon wrote and spake most of the Proverbs, but not all. The Bible tells us in other writings that he spake 3,000 Proverbs, and he wrote or spake a thousand and five songs. In the book of Proverbs, one commentary said there are over 500 Proverbs. I haven't tried to count them, but that's what this commentary said. We know King Lemuel or Lemuel wrote the very last chapter of Proverbs, chapter 31, and it deals with a virtuous woman. Who has a virtuous wife here? You're a blessed man if you do. Amen. <laughs> a little slow on that, brother, but I heard you. <laughs> but seriously, uh, he wrote of the virtuous woman. In chapter 30, Agur, who evidently was a student of wisdom, wrote, he called it a prophecy. And Lemuel means dedicated to El. El is a root word for God in Hebrew. So Lemuel, whoever this king was, was dedicated unto God, at least the meaning of his name. Agur, again, who wrote a prophecy in chapter 30, he was a collector. Some say a collector of wisdom or of wise sayings. Also in the past, I'm being redundant, but I ask, what is a proverb? And here's what I had written down, and it tells a proverb is a short, familiar sentence or saying in widespread use 
expressing a supposed truth or moral lesson. When I was a kid, we'd make jokes about old Chinese saying. But a proverb, again, it's a saying or a sentence. It's, it's short. It's familiar. We have proverbs and sayings in our country, maybe in other countries they do not have. But these proverbs are expressing truths or supposed truths and I'll say moral lessons that are contained in them. Can you say amen? Then I looked up the word wisdom. And the wisdom is the ability to make right use of knowledge. Brother Flowers, I'm again being redundant. Back in the past, I shared our brother when he got in church. He was very zealful. Had a lot of zeal, but not much wisdom. Brother Charles Kelly, I'm sure you know him. He goes to Hope Chapel. And he met a woman, and he asked her, Ma'am, do you, do you love the Lord? She said, Sure, I love the Lord. He said, Do you keep his commandments? And she said, No. He said, You're a liar then. The Bible said, He that saith, I know him, and keepeth not his commandments, is a liar. And the truth is not in him. But aren't you thankful that his commandments are not grievous? And Jesus said, if you love me, keep my, what? My commandments. So he had it right. I mean, he was really quoting scripture. But was that the wise way to apply knowledge? I don't believe that it was. You say amen. All right. If you would turn to Proverbs and we'll get right into the word of God. We serve the all wise God. Do you believe that? And I know I'm just hitting and missing here. 1 Timothy 1.17 says, Now unto the King eternal, immortal, invisible, the only wise God. Jude 25, the last verse in that little epistle, Jude believed to be the half-brother of the Lord. Jesus said this, said, To the only wise God and our Savior, how many know who your Savior is? How many know that Jesus is the only wise God? Can you say amen? And all oh, under the anointing, if you have another God, Brother Turner, he's not a wise God. And you're not a wise person to worship him or her or it or whatever. But I thank God I know whom I have believed. He's the true God and eternal life, and he's the only wise God. And thank God, he again, he manifested that wisdom and power to save you and I when he did the work that he did through the Lord Jesus Christ on that cross and in that glorious resurrection. It was I was writing down these notes, scribbling them down the other day. I, I thought, if God is not a wise God, we're in trouble. Can you imagine when he created the heavens and the earth and all things, if he was foolish? Or Brother Jeff, he was not wise. What a catastrophe it would be. It would only take the earth being, what, maybe a few miles or feet or however much closer to the sun to cause it to be so hot we would all die. Or so far away that we would freeze. But our God is the only wise God. Paul said that his infinite, he is infinite. His knowledge, his wisdom, his ways are unsearchable and past finding out. We serve a mighty God whose thoughts are above our thoughts. Come on now, higher than the heavens are above the earth. But he desires to give us that wisdom, that knowledge and understanding. If we will seek it, we'll hunger and thirst for it, we'll search for it. Matter of fact, the Bible says through James, if any man lack wisdom, let him ask of God. God, give me wisdom. Open up my understanding to your word. And I believe that God will do that. Can you say amen? Proverbs 3, I'm just going along, 19 and 20 shows us that God's wisdom, his understanding and knowledge were all applied in the creation of the heavens and the earth. So God does not speak foolishly, Sister Turner. He speaks in wisdom and in power. So when God, I feel the Holy Ghost, when God spoke his word, in that word was the wisdom of God, the knowledge of God, the understanding of God, and the power of God. Brother Land, the Bible says, Brother Childs, the Bible says that he 
He upholds all things by the word of his power. And in that word is the wisdom of God. Again, I say the knowledge of God and the power of God. Paul cried out in Romans eleven thirty three, oh Oh, the depth of the riches, both of the wisdom and knowledge of God, exclamation point. How unsearchable are his judgments and his ways past finding out, exclamation point. The psalmist said, Great is the Lord, and of great power his understanding is infinite. Psalm 147, 5. What I want to look at now is a contrast, chapter 8 and chapter 7. Last week, of course, we had the panel. There was, there was no teaching. But prior to that, the lesson was in chapter 7 of the great book of Proverbs. And in chapter 7, we see an immoral woman who had the attire of a harlot. She's loud. She's stubborn. And I'll just insert this. When a woman goes into pornography, the adult industry, and she becomes a harlot or she is used and abused of men, you'll notice she, she changes. Her femininity is gone. Her tenderness is gone. Her kindness is gone. She's hard. She's stubborn. And she's mean because she's been degraded and dirtied. Amen. But in Proverbs 7, we find a woman with a attire of a harlot. She's loud. She's stubborn. And she is crying out. Here's the contrast, Sister Courtney. She is crying out to men, saying, come. Let us take our fill of love throughout the night. The good man of the house, it sounds to me like either she had a husband or she was a liar, but she's saying, my husband is gone. He's taking money. He's not here. So either she is a harlot or she's just an adulterous woman. But however you want to view it, she is immoral. She is called a strange woman in Scripture. And she is crying out to the men. She's inviting them to come unto her. But in chapter 8, I see a contrast. I see a sister hunt called Lady wisdom so this immoral if you want to say lady or woman is crying out to men but in chapter 8 the it is the wisdom of God and God's always he him in the masculine sense but here we see wisdom portrayed in the feminine if you will as a woman a she or a her and so here Lady Wisdom, so to speak, is also, Brother Ash, crying out to the sons of man, saying in so many words, come unto me. You that are simple, even you that are fools, the wisdom of God's voice is crying out to you. God does not want his people to be foolish. Brother Dale, he does not want us to be ignorant or unlearned. The Bible says my people are destroyed for what? Lack of knowledge. God does not want us to be fools or foolish or ignorant. Sister Dana, the Bible has a lot to say also about fools. <clears throat> I don't want to be a fool. David said in Psalm 14, 1, in Psalm 53, 1, almost identical words, he said, the fool has said in his heart, there's no God. Romans 1, Paul spoke of a people that had a foolish, darkened heart. And professing themselves to be wise, they became what? Fools. When I look in Scripture, Brother Flowers, I know you've studied this out. Wisdom, I see the wisdom of God. I see the wisdom of man. And I also see the wisdom of the devil. James spoke of a wisdom that is devilish. Brother Harold, Satan is wise, he is crafty, he's subtle, he has wiles. Come on. He's a, we used to say he's a sly old fox, I think they would say. He's sly, he would say sneaky, he's crafty. We don't need the wisdom of the devil. We need the wisdom of God. Come on. And some people, Jeremiah 4.22, are wise to do evil. I see that in our politics today. 
You know, I'm not the smartest fellow in the world, but I don't want to sink a ship if I'm in it. We got a party and a movement now that hate this nation, that hate Christians, and if they had their way, they'd destroy, destroy all these churches and do away, kill Christians, imprison pastors, and destroy this nation, its constitution. They're, they're wise to do evil, Jeremiah 4.22. I'm not going to sink a ship if I'm in it. I guess they think they will be exempt when it's destroyed. Can you say amen or oh me? That's true. I love this great nation. Amen. God, God's a God of, of law and order and, and the right way to do certain things. But here we go. Proverbs chapter 8 verse 1. A little bit of a foundation laid there for you. All right. So unsearchable. Does not wisdom cry? The answer is yes. And understanding put forth her voice. It almost sounds like there's two ladies here, so to speak. Lady wisdom and lady understanding. Or it could be an overlapping, and I'm sure it is. But nevertheless, it puts the wisdom of God, this attribute of the only wise God, the infinite one, the eternal spirit, it puts that great infinite unsearchable attribute of God again it's personifying it as a woman that's crying out and putting forth her voice are you listening to the wisdom of God you say brother Blanton how do I get wisdom well in the word of God if you're not studying the scripture you'll, you'll never have wisdom and knowledge and understanding you'll never be close to God you won't you can hear teachers, that helps, sure it does. But you've got to get in there and dig it out yourself. And pray, God, give me, thank you, Lord, Holy Ghost. Just, Paul said, I desire that God would grant unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. Say, God, Lord, give me the spirit of wisdom. Lord God, open up my understanding to your word, to your truths. Oh, let the Holy Ghost speak to me, Lord. God, I'm asking you for wisdom and discretion. I'm under the Holy Ghost right now. Come on now. Just ask God for Lord, give me wisdom. God, give me knowledge and understanding of your holy word, Lord. God, I want to be, oh, the Bible says the wise will shine as the brightness of the firmament. We need to be children of wisdom. The Bible says wisdom is justified of her children. God wants his people to be wise and knowledgeable and understanding. There's some treasures there, Sister Courtney, and they're all hid in the Lord Jesus Christ, who is the eternal spirit manifest in flesh, the Father in the Son, God in humanity. Where does wisdom cry today to you and I, Brother Flowers, my friend? Where does it cry? Well, verse 2 tells us. She stands in the top of high places. I don't know if it means on hills or mountains or tall buildings, or, but wherever these high places are, the wisdom of God, she is crying out to the sons of man. She's crying out, Brother Webb, to you, to me, to all of us. She's crying out, again, to simpletons and fools. Are you listening to her voice, Sister Hunt? I know that you are. She also cries out by the way in the places of the paths. Evidently, Brother Dale, Sister Marcia, where men walk, where they trod, maybe through Walmart. In Mississippi, they say Walmart. They put a K on the end of it. My wife works at Walmart. As you're walking through Walmart, as you're going through the doors of your house, wherever you're, as you, thank you, Lord, as you walk through the doors of this building, through these pews. I believe the wisdom of God is crying out, understanding is saying, hear me. Hear what I have to say, the Lord God is saying. Hear me. Hear my wisdom. Receive my instruction. Receive, obtain my knowledge. Mm. Thank you, Lord. Holy Ghost speaking. Isaiah 33, 6. Would you turn to it real quick? Lord, just quicken that to me. Chapter 33, look at verses, verses 5 and 6. The Lord is exalted, for he dwelleth on high. 
He hath filled Zion with judgment and righteousness. Now look at verse 6. And wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability of thy times and strength of salvation. The fear of the Lord is his treasure. You want treasure from God? Fear him. You want to be strong and stable in your times of life when you go through cancer like I've been through, when you go through suffering, and not just that, but when you have a lot of questions, you need God's direction. The wisdom of God, the knowledge of God is going to keep you stable and strong and steadfast as you walk with him. Do you believe that? That's what he said, that wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability of thy times and strength of salvation. But the fear of the Lord is his treasure, and the fear of the Lord is the beginning of what? Wisdom. If you don't fear God, you're not going to have much wisdom. <laughs> Amen. Where else does she cry from? Well, the, the harlot or the immoral strange woman in chapter 7 was, the Bible said, standing on a street corner. She was out in the streets. She was out in the twilight and dark and nighttime, crying unto the sons of men. She's using her word to flatter them. With much words and flattery, he yields to her. She says, come and, and be with me. But here we see Lady Wisdom, Sister Hunt, again crying in the high places, the paths, and she cries at the gates at the entry of the city, at the coming in, at the doors. Wisdom, my brothers and sisters are crying out to Brother Blanton and to you this morning, the wisdom of God. And here again is what she says. Unto you, O men, I call, and my voice is to the sons of man. O ye simple, understand wisdom. And ye fools, be ye of an understanding heart. Look at verse 6. Here, for I will speak, and I jotted down some of the wonderful things that the wisdom of God, this infinite, unsearchable attribute of God, speaks. Good counsel. Everybody say good counsel. I don't need any ungodly counsel. Brother Dale, when I'm going through a lot in my life or I've got a big decision to make, I don't want to stand in the thank you, Lord, and the counsel of the ungodly. I want a godly man or a godly woman that prays and seeks God to give me some counsel, some judgment. Come on. I don't want to hear the voice of fools or foolish. Wisdom speaks of good counsel and sound judgment. Verse 14. It also shows us that it gives understanding and strength to do what is right and to resist evil. You'll also notice in verse 15 and also verse 16, this is what a commentary brought this out. I like this. He said it will give judicial skills and it will give leadership ability. Kings reign by the wisdom of God. I'm going back a little bit to politics again. I believe in using etiquette when you're in somebody else's pulpit. But we have some foolish people in leadership in our country. I'll say it again. If you want to sink a ship and you're in it, you're not a very intelligent person. If you want to destroy a, the greatest nation on the first face of the earth, that's not the wisdom of God. <clears throat> That's the wisdom either of man or of the devil, devilish wisdom. I want a king or a president or a leader or congressman who has the wisdom and the knowledge and the understanding of God in their administration. Will you agree with that? And if the wisdom of God is there, again, they're going to rule and reign in righteousness, justice, and they're going to be fair to all humanity, whether you're black, white, brown, red, yellow, male or female. So the wisdom of God here we see in verses 15 and 16, it says this, By me, 
That's the wisdom of God personified, speaking. By me, kings. Oh, thank you, Lord. Holy Ghost speaking to me. Yes, Lord. Jesus one day is going to rule and reign. The Bible said he's going to reign in righteousness. And his name is Jehovah Sidkenu, the Lord, our righteousness. Oh, when Jesus rules and reigns, friend, it's going to be a different world. Amen. There's going to be peace throughout all the earth when the Prince of Peace rules and reigns. And again, he is the wisdom of God and the power of God manifest to save. And in him, again, I say, dwelleth all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. But he says, by me kings reign and princes decree justice. By me princes rule and nobles, even all the judges of the earth. I like verse 17. Got a smile on my face. It says what? I love them that love me. The wisdom of God loves you. You say, that sounds strange. But actually it's God speaking but his wisdom is so great, so vast, so infinite, so unsearchable, so higher than I, that it speaks as if it's almost like it's separate from God. But no, it is the attribute of God, and God through his wisdom is saying, Sister Ashcraft, I love you because you love me. I love you, them that love me. We need to love the wisdom of God. And may I say the knowledge of God, the understanding of God. And I'll say this, Brother Dale, I don't get dressed and come to church and, and do all of this for all of these years just for a social club. I come through the doors to learn and to feel the unction and the power and the deep things of God. Amen. I want to know why I do what I do and believe or say I believe what I believe. I want to understand it. I want to know it. And not just because somebody said it or go with the flow. Show me in the scripture. God, give me knowledge. Give me wisdom, I pray. But verse 17, the wisdom of God says, I love them that love me. And those that seek me early shall find me. Sister Bessie, God's not hiding his wisdom from us. He wants you to seek it. Search for it. Do it early. And God says, you'll find me. Aren't you thankful for that? And it's a treasure worth finding, may I say. Anybody, I'll stop here. Anybody got a comment or a question? I haven't done that in a while. Any comments, questions? No. Verse 18. Here's something else that, that riches offers or that wisdom offers better yet. Look at the benefits and the rewards. Again, good counsel, sound judgment, understanding, strength to do what is right, to resist evil. It offers leadership ability, judicial skills, riches, and honor. I believe spiritual riches and I believe even natural riches God will bless you with through his wisdom that is infinite and past finding out. I desire spiritual riches. Thank you, Lord. Holy Ghost speaking. Years ago, there's a man mightily used of God in raising the dead and healing the sick, casting out devils. And a Jewish man, a Jewish, uh, actually it was a rabbi over a synagogue, argued with him some and this, that, and the other and told this, this man who was used of God in the Holy Ghost, he said, if I, if I taught what you taught and did what you were doing, I would lose my, my congregation, my synagogue. And this man said, you know what? I'd rather eat crackers and drink swamp water to know that I'm in harmony with Almighty God than to have a great big church and a lot of riches. Come on now. Can you say amen? Go ahead and lift up your hands ah, and give the Lord God praise. This is the true riches here, what we're talking about this morning, the wisdom of God, the knowledge of God, the understanding of the Most High God. Sure, he'll bless you physically and materially and naturally. But, Sister Turner, I'm after the spiritual things. And God has added May I share this a little personal testimony? I walked through the house not long ago and said, God, I didn't ask you for this. We're not rich, but God's blessed us. God, I didn't ask you for thousands of dollars in the bank. I didn't ask you for that. Lord, this house, I didn't ask you for that. No, I, I said, Lord, I did want a dependable car, maybe a little money in my pocket. 
this is not what I'm about, a house and money and cars. Not that we're rich, but God has blessed Regina and I. God, I'm after you. I'm after the demonstration of the spirit and power of God. I want to see the supernatural power of God in the church. Come on now. Who believes in the word of wisdom? <clears throat> Who believes in the word of knowledge? Who believes in the discerning of spirits? How about the gifts of healing, the working of miracles, the gift of faith? We need tongues and interpretation and prophecy by the one and self-same Holy Ghost. Can you say amen? That's what I'm after, Sister Betty McNutt. I'm after the power of God, the wisdom of God to give to his people. And if God adds a car and money, I'll take it. But if not, that's not what I'm about. It really isn't. The more you have, the more you're encumbered with. Amen. Verse 18, riches and honor are with me. Yea, durable riches. I thought, well, is that talking about natural things lasting? Well, that's the thought. Or does it mean durable? It continues on. The spiritual riches. And righteousness. Verse 19, my fruit, that is my, I'll say my character, is better, Sister Turner, than fine gold, choice silver, the wisdom of God is greater and better. God's wisdom will guide you into the paths of righteousness. I like what David said in Psalm 23. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness. Wisdom does. Foolishness will lead you to be an immoral harlot or a thief or a liar or, or an ungodly person. But the wisdom of God will lead you into righteousness. Come on now. And holiness. Do you believe that, Sister Betsy? Somebody clap your hands and move around. I'm feeling the power of God up here. Ah. Woo. Lord. Ah. Lord God, Jah, I praise you, Lord. As infinite, mm, infinite wisdom of the eternal God. Do you love him? Now I want us to look here as I hurry along in verse, well, verse 20, 21. I lead in the way of righteousness in the midst of the paths of judgment that I may cause those that love me to inherit substance. Now, that sounds like natural things. And I will fill their treasures. Now, look at verse 22. Trinitarians, they try to make this out to be a trinity here. It's not what it's taught. I didn't know you was putting that up there. <laughs> Thank you. The Lord possessed me in the beginning of his way before his works of old. Brother Johnson, some, some try to say the Trinitarians say, well, that was the Son of God. No, the Son of God, his beginning was when he was conceived in the womb of Mary and nine months later was born. Thus he became God's only begotten son, Mary's firstborn. Then he grew into manhood. At the age of 30, God sent his only begotten son into the world, from the womb of Mary into the world, not from heaven down to earth. We're still here talking about the attribute of God, the great wisdom of God. The Lord God possessed me in the beginning of his way before his works of old. Verse 23, if you'll continue on. The Bible says, I was set up from everlasting from the beginning or ever the earth was. Again, if God did not use his wisdom when he created the heavens and the earth and the oceans and the boundaries and all, what a catastrophe it would have been. What chaos. Holy Ghost speaking to me. Thank you, Lord. I hear you. If the wisdom of God is not in the church, you're going to have chaos and confusion. And where there's confusion, there's all kinds of evil work. Holy Ghost is speaking to me right. I hear you, Lord. We need the wisdom of God in the church. Mm. Again, we believe in the gift of the word of knowledge. There's time Brother Hunt may need a word of knowledge from God. Or he may give a word of knowledge if he has that gift to give. And again, what is wisdom and knowledge? It is applying knowledge, I'll say, in the right way. So we need the wisdom of God in the church. It will bring down confusion and so forth. Verse 23, or is it 24? When there was no depth, no water, I was brought forth. 
the wisdom of God was brought forth. When there was no fountains abounding with water, before the mountains were settled, before the hills was brought, or hills was I, I was brought forth. I one time said this, Brother Turner, when God created the heavens and the earth, the water covered the face of the earth. And he said, let the dry land appear. And I was kidding around and said, well, the, the way that he could do that, he just pushed his foot farther down on the earth, the water level would drop more, and the water would, and the land would come forth. Peter said the earth standing out of the water and in the water. Out of the waters, the dry land that you and I are on this morning, and in the waters, the basins of the oceans, the rivers, the streams. But before God did all of these wonderful works back in Genesis chapter 1, when the only wise God, the eternal spirit, did all of these things, well, his wisdom came forth. Through his word, his wisdom came forth. The mountains were settled. The hills were brought forth. Verse 26, while as yet he had not made the earth, nor the fields, nor the highest part of the dust of the world, the wisdom of God was there. Before creation, the wisdom of God. God's always been. Why? He's the king, eternal, immortal, invisible, the only wise God. Verse 27, what have I got? Five minutes. No, I've got three minutes. Hmm. When he prepared the heavens, I, the wisdom of God, was there. When he set a compass upon the face of the depths, when he established the clouds above, when he strengthened the fountains of the deep, when he gave, uh, gave to the sea his decree. In other words, here we're going to see that he put boundaries. There's your shorelines. That's the boundaries. He won't let the sea overflow them. The oceans overflow them. He made boundaries, and God does believe in boundaries. He set the boundaries for the countries and the borders, Acts 17. And Israel did have a wall. And they did have a geographical location that God said, I've given you this area. Can you say amen or oh me? Verse 29, when he gave to the sea his decree that the waters should not pass his commandment when he appointed the foundations of the earth, then, now some say this is the Son of God. No, it's still the wisdom of God speaking in verse 30. Then I was by him as one brought up with him, and I was daily his delight, rejoicing always before him. God is rejoicing in his own wisdom, or his wisdom is rejoicing in him. I believe God talks to himself. Brother Dale, I talk to myself. Somebody said you're all right, but when you start answering yourself, you got a problem. The Bible said he worketh all things after the counsel. What is it? After his own counsel. I believe God talks within himself, reasons within himself, definitely thinks within himself. Because his wisdom is rejoicing before him. Is it if there's another person rejoicing? But it's the wisdom of God. Rejoicing before the Lord God. God's always been wise. God said, I'm the Lord, I change not. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. There's no variableness, neither shadow of turning in him. If he's wise today, Brother Turner, and I feel the Holy Ghost, he was wise before creation. When this earth melts with a fervent heat and passes away with a loud noise, God is always the same. He never changes. He doesn't falter. He doesn't fail. We serve the eternal spirit. We serve the only wise God. Clap your hands unto him and shout praise <coughs> Under the holy and the just one, blessed be the name of the Lord God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Well, my time is up. I'll just go down and say verse 35, whosoever findeth me findeth life. I love that. And shall obtain favor of the Lord. Sister Webb, you want to find favor of the Lord and have life and that more abundantly, have a blessed life. Ah, oh, then let's get the wisdom of God in our hearts and our minds. Let's be children of wisdom. Let's walk upright with him 
and thank God he'll bless us. Do you love him today? One more time, clap your hands and shout praise unto God as we change ah, the order of our service. I feel the unction from the Lord this morning. God bless you this morning. It's time to change the order of the service. Bless you.